from the cities to the suburbs to the loneliest town on the quietest street to take our message of hope and growth for every American to every American. I will keep America moving forward, always forward, for a better America, for an endless, enduring dream and a thousand points of light. This is my mission and I will complete it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, of course, uh, that, of course, former president, uh, 41st president of the United States, George Herbert Walker Bush. And joining us now is the man who was his chief of staff, the man who uh, co-chaired his campaign, and the man who has written a book all about that presidency. And the man, it's called The Quiet Man, The Indispensable Presidency of George H.W. Bush, our friend, former governor of New Hampshire, John Sununu. Hello, sir. Thanks for having me on again, Steve. It's How are you? always my pleasure to speak to you, Governor. Um, congratulations on the book. Uh, Why the Quiet Man as the title? Well, you know, um, George Bush's demeanor uh, may have been his biggest problem. He, his mother told him, George, never brag. And uh, this was a president that cared more about the results he got than getting credit for it. And I thought that after 25 years, uh, I ought to put together a compilation of what he really accomplished that a lot of people really don't know, and even a lot of people that were watching it never really appreciated what came out of it, and uh, in essence overcome uh, that unwillingness to talk about himself. And so since he was so quiet, I thought that was an appropriate title. It came from a, a line he used at the 1988 acceptance speech. Uh, I am a quiet man, but I hear the quiet people that others don't. That's very interesting. And, you know, you talk about his accomplishments, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, before I, I ask you to, to talk about those, do you think it gets lost in part because it, he followed two years of Reagan? He it was sandwiched in the middle. Uh, then two years followed him of Clinton. and uh, Two years, two terms. Two terms. And then two terms of his son, and now two terms of Obama. Do you think his presidency kind of gets lost? Well, I think, I think it was such a momentous time, and, and to be honest about it, I think in a way he made, for example, the, his steering of the collapse of the Soviet Union, he made it look so easy that people underappreciated it. And, and what I wanted to do in this book is let people see some of the background, the real intricate things that had to be done to, to keep this thing moving forward, the way he had to work with with really strong egos like Francois Mitterrand and Helmut Kohl and Margaret Thatcher, and certainly how he had to just nurture the relationship with Gorbachev in order to make that particular achievement happen. Right. Yeah, uh, so, so you got the Berlin Wall. You got uh, the Soviet Union you know, collapsing, some would say. You got uh, environmental actions, which you know uh, some people on the conservative side might look back now and say they were a precursor in some way to maybe to what uh, is going on now, but a, a lot did happen in the four well, years. But let's talk about the environmental yeah. side, because people have to understand what happens in the real world. Uh, for 13 years, the Clean Air Bill had been, uh, amendments to the Clean Air Bill had been stymied. Now you have a conservative president who understands market forces. If he doesn't pass the Clean Air Bill, then Bill Clinton comes in and passes a liberal uh, command and control Clean Air Bill. So what George Bush ended up pushing through Congress, and we worked it hard, was a market-based, free enterprise-based clean air bill that used incentives rather than command and control, and, and ended up achieving all the reductions that everybody wanted at one-fifth of the projected cost that we had. And so this was something that dealt with a need. It removed, if you will, that issue from the table so that the liberals couldn't pass an insane piece of legislation later right. and serve the country well. Talk about what kind of, you know, what, what kind of man he was. You dealt with him in a way that, uh, that uh, few did, and you, you know him in a way that few do. Uh, talk about what he was like to work with, and uh, what about his temper? What about his temperament? What about his disappointments? I mean, you, you saw it all. Well, first of all, he was a very disciplined guy. He, he, he really worked hard to put an agenda together. Uh, mostly working with governors on the domestic side. He liked to listen to people. He uh, had some very good people working with him, Baker, Scowcroft, myself, Roger Porter from Harvard. Um, uh, even Dick Darman that gets a bad rap really was a very smart guy and, and, and was, we were able to use that intelligence quite well. The president listened to options. 
He sorted things out. And then when he made a decision, um, he expected it to be followed. And, and, and you know, he, he, was a, he was committed to his own decisions and expected his staff to be committed to his own decisions I, and his cabinet to be I, committed I, to his decisions. I got two questions in a minute and a half. But number one, no new, read my lips, no new taxes. Did he, what, did he talk about that? He did, and, and, and when you read the book, you'll see he hated taxes. But Mitchell and Foley, who controlled Congress 260 to 175 and 55 to 45, really were determined to force him to pay the ransom of taxes. All right, and his the, two sons, uh, the, 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 of course, uh, uh, the, the, the president uh, who would become the 43rd president, and then, of course, the one who won, would like to become the next president. Who, who, if you know them uh, well enough to answer, who, who's more like him? And what characteristics of, of George Herbert Walker Bush uh, were passed on to which sons? I think they're all different personalities, really. I think Jeb has a lot of the personality, more of his mother's personalities than his father's. I think George W. is, is sort of a, a free spirit soul, which is a little bit different than, than President Bush 41. They're all three different personalities. That's interesting. And um, finally, uh, do you think uh, there'll be a third uh, Bush presidency? I don't know, but this country needs a Republican president. I lean towards governors and former governors. We have a handful of really good governors and former governors running. We need that kind of experience to fix the mess that Obama is leaving this country. Great to talk to you. The Quiet you. Man, the indispensable presidency of George H.W. Bush by the one and only John Sununu. Thank you, sir. Thank Up you, next, Steve. Bill Gertz of the uh, Washington Free Beacon. Don't go away.